Good afternoon, dear brethren, sisters, saints of the Church of God, Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please read along with me in the scriptures we will be looking at and considering today. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me. Don't. Don't trust what I say. Trust the scriptures, the authorized version, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. Read along with me. You know why? Because I'm fallible. I make mistakes. And you need to see and hear what you, we are reading today. Okay? So please, don't just sit there on your duff. This is not for your entertainment or amusement, obviously. But please, get the authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me. Okay? Getting ahead of the curve. The mind of Christ. Now we have spake about this in several videos in, in the past. It has been added in with several videos. But today, the focus of this video is going to be the mind of Christ. Okay? But before we do that, today is the second. Proverbs 2, verses 1 on verse 9. My son, if thou wilt receive my words, how do we receive the Lord's words today? Here, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? And hide my commandments with thee. That doesn't mean you hide it to not share, but they, you keep them here. They are in your heart. Okay? So that, thy, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and apply thine heart to understanding. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? Wisdom, fear of the Lord, understanding, departing from evil, produces what? Knowledge. Okay? You can also say wisdom, knowledge, and understanding... Because the more knowledge you have of our Lord through his word, that ought to kind of influence you in your understanding departing from evil. Okay? <clears throat> Let's continue. So that thou incline thine ear to wis unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge. See, now see how that's set up? And liftest up thy voice for for understanding. Now look at this. Verse 2 and 3. We see wisdom, fear of the Lord. We see understanding, departing from evil. Then in verse 3 we see knowledge. Fear of the Lord produces departing from evil, produces a knowledge. The fear of man. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, Earthly, carnal, fleshly, sensual, led by your senses, your feelings, devilish, self-explanatory. The two wisdoms, okay? The two wisdoms. There are only two wisdoms in this world, okay? There are only two, all right? Don't believe these heretics that say there are multiples. Well, the scripture says, intermingleth with all wisdom. Yes, there's only two, though. There is one that comes of God, and there is one that is of the world, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. There are only two. So when you're into, uh, when these guys try to inter intermingle with all wisdom, they're trying to be like Solomon, having their cake and eat it, eat it too, and play both sides of the fence. Can't do it that way, dude. Okay? Let's continue. If thou seekest her. Now here we see wisdom being equated unto a beautiful woman. You read Proverbs chapter 8. Okay? Wisdom, and like I've told you before, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is equated unto us as the beauty of a woman so that it'll get into our heads that way. Okay? But see, as woman is the glory of man. Okay? The fear of the Lord is the glory of God. You know, to fear God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? But here we see, if thou seekest her, fear of the Lord, as silver, 
and searchest for her, fear of the Lord, wisdom, as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the de definition right there, verse 5, the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. Okay? For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You see that? Okay? In verses 2 and 3, you got wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Fear of the Lord, departing from evil, produces knowledge here. Okay? Here, verse 6, we see wisdom, fear of the Lord, knowledge, knowing, and understanding, departing from evil. Okay? Verse 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Okay? Don't, don't believe these devil uh, free gracers who say to you that the way you walk doesn't matter. The way that you walk doesn't matter. Now, in regards to salvation, and remember, the free gracers don't have the true Jesus. They don't have the true gospel, I, okay, either. They don't have, they're, they're, they're lost. They're of Rome. They're of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And Rome has everything wrong. But, oh, according to the Trinitarian, they have who God is right. <laughs> Stupid. It's one of the things that you can throw, you know. It's funny because when you encounter a Trinitarian who preaches against Rome, <laughs> it's like, oh, wait a minute, you believe in the same God that Rome does. But yet, Rome has everything, everything wrong. Everything is wrong with Rome. But yet, Rome has as its integral part one God and three persons, right? Y'all crazy! Y'all crazy! Okay? You're all crazy. Let's continue. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Now see, our walk is an example of working out our salvation with fear and trembling. Working out what the Lord has put in himself. Okay? When you go to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name. That's the, the result of going through that. Okay, you can't wait to do it. The lesser calling on the greater, and he saves you. He seals, with, seals you with himself. Okay? Okay? Does your walk matter as pertaining to salvation today? No. It matters on how you reflect the one you claim to serve. And that matters. That matters. And this is where the antinomianist comes in and tries to deceive you and say, chuck it off and don't even have any regard for how you walk with the Lord and how you serve and how you um, are an ambassador unto him. All I got to say is, well, look at praise that he isn't. Don't do that. Okay? <laughs> don't do that, please. All right? See, the way you serve the Lord reflects him. And his honor matters. Okay? Okay? Now, let's continue. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path. Okay? All right? Now, mind of Christ mind of Christ appears in variation in two places. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, we are doing this video simply because <laughs> the level of heresy that is out there today. These devils like the free grace idiots are able to get away with highway robbery. Why? Because there's a famine in the land. Of hearing the words of the Lord. That's from Amos 8 verses uh, 11, uh, 10 and 11 I believe it is. But that's in Amos 8. Go find it. Okay. Now the fulfillment of that will come during the time of Jacob's trouble. But there is a, in type, in part, that famine in the land today. People aren't hearing the word of the Lord. 
You go to a church building, they're not hearing the word of the Lord. And what is, it? what is the word of the Lord? The authorized version of the scriptures. You go to a Christian church building, any Bible will do. Okay, yea, hath God said. Uh, it's dependent upon how, uh, a Bible that speaks to you. Textual criticism, okay? People are not hearing the words of the Lord. Okay? There is an ignorance, a willful ignorance in the majority of people, and especially in Christianity, when you have these Jesuit-trained cemeterians that come out with their textual criticism, and it's like, well, the Greek this, the Greek that. Shut up. What Greek are you talking about there, devil? Okay? See, we saints, we have a perfect standard, the authorized version of the scriptures. You Christians, you are your own standard. Now, we are coming out with this video today simply because we cannot put it past the, the, uh, the devils, the adversaries, brethren, uh, at the level of the heresy that is going on today. And the insanity. For example, you got that bald-headed idiot from England who, who preaches that love Satan and pray for Satan. How is he able to get away with that? How? People are lovers of their own selves. They're ignorant of the words of God. Okay? There is an individual out there, and I'm going to name this devil. Okay? His name is Scott. And his channel is Grafted, Grafted Branch Ministry. It just rolls off the tongue naturally to say grafted into hell. The guy's a lying devil, stinking heretic. Okay? I bring him up because that devil tried to tell you people that, <laughs> it's not funny, that the faith that you have isn't your actual faith. It's the actual, literal faith of Jesus himself that you have, which is heresy, absolute heresy. If it's the faith of Jesus, why do we have moments when we wane? Well, he waned in the Garden of Eden. We're going to look at that. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. That all things that were written before time were written for our learning. Okay, we'll get into that in a little bit. Okay, but he tried to tell, tell you that your faith isn't yours, but it is of the Lord. That's veiled Calvinism. Okay, and that video will be in the description box rebuking that vile devil. And another thing about that guy that really bothered me is that he's an emulator. Okay, he's an emulator. He, he tried to ingratiate, and for all I know, you King James Bible believing Christians who follow the man from Maine, who were quick to jump on the bandwagon with that guy, because why? He ingratiated himself to you. He took on the manner mannerisms, he took on the speaking pattern, the vocal inflection of the man from Maine. He even dressed like him, and there was a video that that devil did coming out of the woods just like the man from Maine. And see, the psychological manipulation there is, the visual stimuli is like, look, I look, sound, act, move the part of the man from Maine. Therefore, see, I'm okay. And yet, at the same time, that wicked devil was telling you that your faith isn't yours, but it's Jesus' actual faith. Okay? Wicked devil. And, of course, Jake the Jerk jumped on the bandwagon with that guy. Of course. Of course. And that little punk, he ain't saved either. Okay? He ain't saved either. Okay? I hope that the dude from Maine got enough sense in his head. Just like a dude. And as I understand, he came out with a video where he addressed, it's like, it's, okay, the, the answer to God's grace is our faith. So uh, apparently he did. I don't know. I don't watch that guy there, Franklin, you dumb devil. Okay? But I bring that guy up specifically, specifically because... It's that type of guy, I beg your pardon, I just not stuff over. It's that type of guy who would try to tell you that, hey, you don't even have your own mind. You have the mind of Christ. See, what I'm getting at is, you got somebody like that who's try, who tried to tell you that your faith isn't yours, but it's actually the actual literal faith of Jesus. That would, to me, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that that devil would bleed into saying, well, it's not your mind. You have the mind of Christ. The natural progression 
from telling you that you don't have your own faith, it's the faith of Jesus Christ's, what's the natural progression? Where does that lead on to? Oh, you don't even have your own mind. You have the mind of Christ. You know everything. And what does that bleed into? Ye are gods. Ye are gods. Okay? I hope you see this, you devil. And I hope you repent of your heresy. You called me a heretic because I'm against your Roman Catholic holiday. And you you shift the attention because I pointed a loaded gun to my head. Okay? You haven't really answered the question. You can't because you lost. Okay? But see, I bring that up simply for that example. And with how people are today, wouldn't put it past the devil to try to, pray, to say that, when, that these guys would come out saying, well, it's not your mind. You have the mind of Christ. Really? Then why do th thoughts come into my mind, uh, sinful thoughts, huh? <clears throat> hmm. Why do I still sin? Same thing you can say with the faith of Jesus. Well, like I said, the, the link for that will be in the description box uh, refuting that stupid idiot Scott. All right? All right? <laughs> All right? That will be in the description box for you. But, now, the mind of Christ. Like I said, I would not be surprised to find out people are saying that to you. You actually have the mind of Christ. I, I, you know, I liken that also onto the, uh, well, you know, David had the heart of God. Uh, no, he didn't. David was a man that sought after, went after, reached for the heart of God. It's heresy to say that, Jesus, that, uh, that David had the heart of God. No, he didn't. He sought after the heart of God. He did not have the heart of God. Did he have the heart of God when he had Uriah killed? <clears throat> hmm. Did he have the heart of God when he was number, having the people numbered? Hmm. No. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6, on to the close. Howbeit we, the body of Christ, the saints... We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Now, that's not sinlessly perfect. That's perfect in heart, okay? And, by the way, having a perfect heart is not meaning, does not mean that you have the heart of Jesus. No, it's brokenness. It's contrition. It's fear. It's a heart that is broken of self-righteousness that belongs unto the, Lord, unto the Lord, okay? That doesn't mean that we as saints don't dip back into our pride, okay? Read Romans 7 sometimes, okay? All right? But in perfect meaning perfect in heart. Our hearts belong unto the Lord, okay? But we speak the wisdom of God. Okay, uh, verse 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Okay? Dark sayings. Dark sayings. Okay? Link for that will be in the description box for you as well. Okay? Let's continue. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. There again, verse 8. Another good verse to show you that they were not looking forward to the cross before it happened. Okay? Okay? It's one of the things that a lot of, uh, a lot of heretics like, well, they were looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden. No, they weren't. They were looking forward to the cross during the patriarchal period. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. Okay? Or else you got a contradiction right there, and especially with Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Okay, let's continue. But as it is written, I have not seen an E-Y-E, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his capital S Spirit. Capital S Spirit is the Lord himself, and the Lord is that Spirit, okay? For the Spirit, capital S, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the lowercase s, 
spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the capital S, Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the lowercase s, Spirit of the world, but the lowercase s, Spirit of God, that means one that is imparted, okay, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom speaketh, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, spiritual things, the Lord, with spiritual things, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? But the natural man, unregenerate, not saved, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. That's why in the heretics, you know, they're going off their uh, the teachings of their mother, Rome, and stuff like that. Okay? They can skim across the surface, but they cannot get deep into the scriptures. Why? Because they're not saved. They're not saved. They need a commentary. They need to go to this, that, and the other thing. Okay? But he that is spiritual judgeth oh, all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Here it is. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Question. Do we know everything? There's a lot of people out there who think that they do. But do we know everything? God forbid. No. 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 We have access unto he who knows everything, of course. But do we ourselves know everything? No. And, okay. And look at this. Look at the context that we have read. Okay. All right. Let me see. For, uh, verse 11. Oh, no, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but the Holy Ghost, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See, the context is we as saints are out there speaking the words of the Lord, being servants. Okay? Being servants. All right? We have the mind of Christ. All right? Does that mean that we understand all mysteries? That we understand all things? Uh, John MacArthur thought so. <clears throat> Thinks so, excuse me. Some of these antinomianists think so. Um, Peter Ruckman sure gave the impression that he thought so. Okay? But the reality is, do we know all things? No. No. What is the mind of Christ? And see, this is talking about the wisdom of God and speaking the uh, words of God, the wisdom of God, not in man's wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish, but the wisdom that God giveth. Okay? Okay? For what purpose? To be a servant. Now, now, there are some cutie pies out there who would like to take this and say and try to tell us that we, we know all things. Really, and they and they like to go to to Psalm one nineteen mem, okay? You little cutie pies, okay? You little cutie pies. Psalm one nineteen mem, Psalm one nineteen mem. Ninety seven on the uh, one hundred four in Psalm one nineteen, and they'll go to and these guys who want to probably teach this stuff like, see, we got the mind of Christ, we know all things, really. Yet. Yet, to you, it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. Yet, most of you can't even answer when the New Testament began, but yet you know all things. <laughs> but, 
See, Psalm 119, men. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for, they, for thy testimonies are my meditation. Thy testimonies. I have more understanding than my teachers. Why? Because the teachers weren't here. That's the inference there. And see, we have the completed canon of Scripture. We have the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, Word of God. Here it is. Here it is. Because we have that, and because we have this, and we search the Scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit that dwells within the saved believer. Okay, He will guide you into all truth. Okay? But we do not know all things. Okay, let's continue. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding departing from evil. Therefore I hate every false way. See, Psalm 119 is pointing to the scriptures. The word of God. Okay? The word of God. All right? And while we're at it here, let's continue on in none. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I may keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, make me alive. O Lord, according unto thy word. Except I beseech thee thy free will offerings of my mouth, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand. Yet do I not forget thy law. Dispensational difference. Under the law, there was no eternal security under the law. Okay? It was faith and works. Not by grace through faith. Okay, that's stupid. By grace through faith is for this dispensation. Okay? Not under the law. All right? So, my soul is continually in my hand. There was no eternal security. Our soul today in this dispensation is in the hand of the Lord. Why? Because we are sealed until the day of redemption. Under the law, the Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go. There was no eternal security. Why? Because the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross, hadn't happened yet. Okay? All right, let's continue. So, that's a dispensational difference right there. Verse 110. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I erred not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as an heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. See, today, how does our Father teach us? Through scripture. How does our Father impart to us wisdom, the fear of the Lord, understanding, departing from evil, knowledge? The Lord Himself, the Holy Ghost, through what? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word, the authorized version, is truth. This is why, dear saints, dear people, when you run into a Christian, well, the Greek says, and you ask a Christian, well, which which one of these is perfect? Well, there, there isn't really a perfect uh, Bible. And they're right about that. There isn't a perfect Bible. The authorized version of the scriptures is what is perfect. Okay? All right? This is why we have to be up in arms about the scripture issue. Okay? The Bibles come from Rome. The scriptures come from God. All right? Now, John 16. John 16. John 16, verses 7 on to verse 16. Okay? John 16, verses 7 on to verse 16. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the capital C, Comforter, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. 
Jesus is the Father, by the way. Okay? And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. But the Holy Ghost doesn't convict of sin. How stupid. <laughs> How stupid. I mean, uh, that's the antinomianist grasping, clutch, um, clinging on the straws to justify their lasciviousness, okay? I also remember that wicked devil witch, Renee Rowland, was a big proponent. Well, the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin. doesn't convict you because you're not saved. Yeah. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. And that's Satan. Okay? I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it, now see, why can they not bear him, bear them now? Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. One God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. A little while, and yet ye shall see me. And again a little while, and ye shall... S Wait. A little while, and ye shall not see me. Excuse me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me. Because I go to the Father. Okay? Before the death, burial, and resurrection, what was their faith in? If they didn't know of the death, burial, and resurrection until it actually happened... What was their faith in before the death, burial, and resurrection? In the Lord Jesus Christ as him, as the son of David, king of the Jews, king of Israel. Their faith before the death, burial, and resurrection was not in the death, burial, and resurrection because they didn't know about it until it actually happened. Okay? And before the death, burial, and resurrection, dear friend, it was still under the law. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Or you become a free gracer. Okay? Or you become a Catholic. Okay? Or a Pentecostal. And let's go on down the line. Okay? Alright? Now, in Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, just uh, refreshing our memories. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. This is, this is milk stuff. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy, capital S, spirit of promise, the Lord himself, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ, before the time of Jacob's trouble, unto the praise of his glory. Body of Christ be taken out of here before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? And, Col and what does that mean? What does that mean? Colossians 1, one verse. Colossians 1, one verse. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this ministry amongst the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And while we're here, Colossians 2, 11, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. What does that mean? Christ in you. He is that spirit that dwells in you. He is the Father. You have the Father dwelling in you. Jesus Christ, who is the Holy Ghost. Okay? Saints, saved people have God the Father dwelling within us. And He, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, will guide us into all truth. We have access unto the Father. Yes, we do. The Father dwells within us. 
But, see, our little finite minds cannot know all things. Because here's the, here, here's the thing, genius. If we knew everything, wow, we, we'd be pretty Christ-like, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? And if we knew all things, well, what would we need this for, huh? John Boshoff, that wicked devil uh, who's frying in hell, um, he did one of those things, and we're going to touch on this here pretty quick, but um, he, he would bring up Solomon. Okay, and I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but he, he would say, it's like, put away the Bible. You don't need that, and God will give you wisdom. But see, God is a spirit. And without a perfect standard to differentiate which is which, how are you supposed to know? See, you take out that A in God is spirit, well then, how are you supposed to decipher which one is which? That's when you go to your Jesuit little priest, <clears throat> excuse me, your cemetery trained pastor in your church building. See how that works? Now, Luke 24. Luke 24. Verses 25 on to verse 27. Luke 24. Luke 24. 25 on to verse 27, if I can get my fingers to work. Now, this is after, by the way, the death, burial, and resurrection. Luke 24, 25 on to 27. Then, they, this is when the Lord appeared to these two guys that were on the road to Emmaus. After the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? This dispensation. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Verse 27. And beginning at Moses, beginning at Moses, the uh, Torah or the Pentateuch or whatever, whatever you want to say, the first five books, okay? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, you know, like Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Jeremiah, that kind of stuff. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself and the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. The Lord is that spirit. Now, the Lord uses man. Yes, he does. Um, the, uh, the three parts of witnessing will be in the um, description box for you uh, where we talk about this uh, and also called to preach will be in the description box for you uh, if you have questions about that but okay beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the scriptures okay now let's skip ahead to verses 44 on to verse 48 and he said unto them these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. There's your canon without an apocrypha. Okay? Then opened he, who did the Lord, there the disciples understanding that they might understand the scripture and the spirit of truth the comforter the holy ghost the lord is that spirit you know our father our god jesus christ he will guide you into all truth okay then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and you have christ in you if you go the way he elected and he actually saved you and that circumcision made without hands is within you which is not in um majority of these Christians and definitely not in Catholics not in antinomianists not in Pentecostals okay 
All right. And he said unto them, Thus it was it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? And you see that exemplified even in Paul's ministry. Who was, who was the apostle unto us Gentiles? But you see in the book of Acts, where did he go? He went to the Jew first. Okay? To the Jew first. <clears throat> and ye are witnesses of these things. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Alright? And also now, with that seal now, okay, Romans 5, just 1 and 2, like, uh, like we already touched on. We have the Father within us, so what does that mean? Romans 5, Verses 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, by His grace, through our faith, our faith, you devil, okay? By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. See, we have the Father within us. And he will guide us into all truth. But guess what? We don't know everything. And you know what? Our Father doesn't teach us everything. Okay? We have enough to know of as we need to know as pertaining unto salvation and those of us who he has called for certain specific things within the body of Christ. Okay? But we don't know everything. But see, we have access to he who does. Okay? And it is a glory uh, to God to conceal a thing. And it is the honor of kings to search out a matter. A matter. Okay? And see, we are told to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, that we be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And what a coincidence the Bibles take out study in that. Okay. All right. Now, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Verses 1 on to verse 6. <laughs> what is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And see, the free grace devil, antinomian sponscom, what is their faith in? Their faith is in their faith, not on the Lord. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And Christianity, for the most part, does not have the right God. They believe in one God and three persons. That's not the right God. If you do not believe on the right God, you do not have the right God. Hence, you have another gospel and you have another Jesus. Okay? Very simple. And uh, the natural flow into that, James 1. James 1. Verses 5 under 8. If any of you lack wisdom, fear of the Lord, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. 
Let him ask. Let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And what, uh, what other thing of instability is there when you save yourself by your own belief and look in the scriptures just on how to justify sin? Or that you claim to belong unto Christ's church that he founded and your faith is in the cookie and the wine and the sacraments and stuff like that. Unstable. Wavering. Okay? Second Peter chapter 3, uh, 2 Peter 3, by the way, verses 14 on to verse 18. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. You know, those are there are those out there, these Catholic coadjutors, who are the, you know, like well, Paul was a false prophet. Really, and they all point to Peter because they're Catholics. Uh, Peter just here called Paul beloved brother. Okay? Okay? And you read in Acts 15, after the Jerusalem conference, as it were, they all came out preaching what was revealed unto Paul. Even your Pope Peter, Catholic. And Peter never was a Pope. Okay? If I'm not mistaken, uh, they're calling Jupiter there, Peter, if I'm not mistaken on that. Anyway, there's one for you for the description box. Peter, not the first pope. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Anyway, let's continue. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction how can they be unstable they're double minded they want their cake and eat it too they want to use the Lord as a justification for sin that means no circumcision made without hands no Lord in them the hope of glory not sealed unto the day of redemption not saved Get it? Good. Let's continue. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Savior with seven letters. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Psalm 19. Psalm 19. My wife's favorite song. My wife's favorite song. <laughs> she can pretty much verbatim quote what we are about to read. Psalm, one, uh, Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Where do you find all of that? The law, the testimony, you know, the testimony of Jesus Christ. Where do you find all that? In the scriptures, the authorized version, perfect and inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. We already read Psalm 119, none, so, okay? <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? 
cleanse thou me from secret faults. You can tie this in with 1 Corinthians chapter 4, or is it 2 Corinthians chapter 4, where Paul says, I judge not mine own self. How did Paul judge himself? According to the scriptures. He judged himself first through the scripture, and then therefore judges you by the same scripture, by the same perfect standard, okay? Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of thy mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and redeemer. Where are the words of his mouth written? The authorized version of the scriptures. Now see, under the law, there was no eternal security. The Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, depending on infraction or how he saw fit. It was not like today. The death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened. They were not looking forward to the cross. Okay, they were not. All right? But under the law, there was no eternal security. That seal until the day of redemption. And some like to point to Solomon. Go to 1 Kings 4. 1 Kings 4. Okay? 1 Kings 4. There are certain things you have to remember about this. Now, yes, absolutely, God can give you wisdom. Absolutely. God can give you understanding. Yes, he can. God can give you knowledge. Absolutely. But see, what was the difference between under the law and today? The seal until the day of redemption. Okay? 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 29 on to verse 34. Okay? And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country, country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan and the Ezraite, Ezraite and Heman, and Calcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahalal, Malhal, and his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of trees, from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts, and of fowl, and of creeping things, and of fishies. And there came and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon from all kings of the earth which he had which had heard of his wisdom. Okay? So God gave under the law to Solomon all these all this wisdom and stuff and whatnot. Why though? Why though? Go to first, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 1. Second Chronicles chapter 1. Second Chronicles chapter 1. We want verses 9 on to 12. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 9 on to verse 12. Let's read verses 7 on to verse 12. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Solomon said unto God, Thou hast shewed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom, fear the Lord, and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this, thy people that is so great? Stop. Now we all know what uh, happened to Solomon and how uh, women, you know, his wives turned away his heart. Yes. But initially, Solomon asked for wisdom and knowledge. We're going to read also in 1 Kings 3, so don't get ahead of me, okay? But we see here, he asked for wisdom and knowledge. Fear of the Lord and knowledge, knowing something. 
for what purpose? That I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? So Solomon asked for these things. Not that he may glorify himself like the Pentecostals. Like that one in the community uh, section. That one idiot is like, I have more power than anyone. And if you don't believe me, may God strike me. And the thing falls right on his head. It's like, that, that was good. That was good. It's like, <laughs> the praise the Lord. Okay? But see, the Pentecostals are really bad at this. Especially because it's like, well, I speak in tongues. Well, that's not for everyone. I've seen the Lord. Okay, I have the gift of prophecy. I'm like, okay? And stuff like that. Okay? Solomon asked for these things not for his own benefit but that he may be a servant to the people of Israel. He was the king. Okay? So he asked for something, not for his own benefit, but that he might benefit others. Hence, be a servant. Be a servant. God said unto Solomon, what were we reading on to? Verse 12. Because this was in thine heart, thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor life of thine enemies, neither yet asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as not, none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. You ask the Lord for knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Is it for your own betterment? Obviously, that is a after effect of it, yes. But do you ask for it that you may give it on to others? See, being in a position such as this, it's not about me. It's about serving you at the behest of the Lord. That the Lord may be glorified through his servant. Okay? That the Lord be glorified. Not me. I'm here to serve you. And all my life in, in Christ, all my life in Christ, 16 years, I ask the Lord for wisdom, understanding, and knowledge every day. Why? That I may serve you. Okay? Now, 1 Kings 3. 1 Kings 3, verses 9 on the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I, I can't read my own writing. 1 Kings 3, verses 9 on to, we'll say, that's 12. 1 Kings 3, 9 on the 12. Uh, let's read verses 7 on the 12. Hmm, doesn't that sound uh, familiar? <laughs> and now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of, this, of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people. Understanding heart. Now some of you might want to be like, well that's a contradiction. He asked for wisdom and knowledge. An understanding heart departing from evil. Okay? And its basis is what? In wisdom, fear of the Lord, understanding and knowledge, which we already looked at in today's proverb. It's not a contradiction. Solomon asked for an understanding heart that he might have the fear of the Lord and knowledge. It's not a contradiction. Okay? But why did he ask for that? That I may discern 
between good and bad. For who is able to judge this? Thy so great a people. See, Solomon right there acknowledged that he in himself, even though he was a very wise man, he in himself was not adequate enough to judge between good and bad. So he asked what? The Lord for an understanding heart, that he may have wisdom, the fear of the Lord, and knowledge. See how this works? Okay? And why was this? To be a king over Israel. To be a servant. Under the law, which was faith and works, where there was no eternal security. The, the Lord could come and go, come and go. Okay? That's the difference. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. God said unto him, Because <clears throat> thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, <coughs> nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise wisdom, fear the Lord, and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. So yes, God gave him those things. Number one, it was under the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. Number two, the permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was not there. Why? Because the death, burial, and resurrection had yet to happen. But see, today, the Lord dwells within you in the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. See? See? And what we have already looked at, especially with Solomon, great example, why did he ask that? To better make himself better so he could stand on a podium and say, I have more power than anyone? Or brag about, I feel like Paul with all the people that I've led to the Lord. Or I've been doing this for years and years and years. My ministry, this, my man. No. He did it. He asked why? To be a servant. To be a servant. Did Solomon know all things? No, he didn't. He knew, he knew more than most, but did he know everything? You know, about that whole thing about knowing everything, uh, the book of Job, okay, uh, the two part for that will be in the description box where the Lord asks Job like over a hundred some odd questions. Okay? All right, let me just leave that in the air for you. Now, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. So, the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. What is the mind of Christ? Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 on verse 8. And we're going to have some light expository here. If therefore, verses 1 on verse 8. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the capital S spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing... This is so simple. Like I said, you know, you got idiots like Scott out there to, uh, trying to tell you that your faith isn't your own, but the actual faith of Christ himself is the faith that you have? I you can't be. I wouldn't be surprised. Somewhere out there, someone teaching you have the mind of Christ. You have Christ's actual, literal mind within you. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the esteem other better than themselves. And what happens with the free gracer or the Catholic? It's like, I say, I'm saved because I just believe I'm not as bad as so and so. I belong unto the church that Christ founded. I 
and, and, and follow that along. You know, I'm saved because I'm a black Hebrew Israelite. No, you're not. I'm saved because I'm a British Hebrew Israelite. No, you're not. Okay? Let not every man, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mind of Christ. Okay, like I said, do we know all things? Do we know everything like God does? No, we don't. No, we don't. Like I said, there are a lot of people out there who think that they do. But we don't. We don't. What is the mind of Christ? Uh, this is, you know, verses 3 and 4 kind of really explain it already. Being a servant. But now let's read verse 6. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Timothy 3, verse 16. One verse. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the capital S spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, Believed on in the world, received up into glory. Son of man, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Son of God, God manifest in the flesh. Son of David, King of the Jews. That's what that means, okay? All right, and second and second Timothy chapter three, verse nineteen. 2 Timothy uh, 2 Timothy 3 uh, one, one second Sorry about that, couldn't read my own writing 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 Nevertheless the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. All right? Now, in Colossians chapter 2, Colossians 2, verses 8 on to verse 9. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Godhead. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. You and I are made in the image of God. We're not gods. But Jesus, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Spirit was the Holy Ghost. Soul, God the Father. The Word made flesh. The body. Okay, you and I, we have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? Fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. God the Father was the soul. Uh, the Word made flesh. The body. Okay? One God. Comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? And now in John 11. John 11. John 11 verses 39 on 40. Uh, 39 on to 45. <clears throat> Jesus said, uh, now, check this out. Why are we bringing this up? Because people like to, the Trinitarians will ask you, it's like, well, who is Jesus praying to in the garden? Who is Jesus praying to? Remember, God is a spirit. God is bigger than you and I can fathom. And see, the Trinitarian make God that big. Okay. It is not. It is not anything of wonder that God the Father is in heaven, but God the Father is also here on earth in His saints. I'm saved. I have God the Father in me. You saint. You're saved. You have God the Father in you. So what does that mean? That there's a hundred thousand 
father, fathers? No, one God. God is a spirit. God is in heaven, but he is also within us. But John 11, 39 on 45, check this out. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith on him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. There's science for you. After the four days, the smell of putrefaction begins, okay? Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because, the, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Because of the people, giving witness unto the people. Okay? Hinge that. And when he had thus, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which the Lord, which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. And what are we reading on to? What are we reading on to? I lost my place. Uh, verse 45. We kind of read a little bit, um, a little bit farther. But Jesus spake openly like that. Verse. 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. See, we have the Father within us. Jesus is the Father, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Was he praying to himself? He was praying, the Father, the soul of the Godhead. Yes! But he is also on earth, or also up in heaven. See, God is bigger than we, our little finite minds, can imagine. Us saints, we have the Father within us. Again, are there a hundred thousand fathers walking around here? No, one God, the Father dwelling within the saints. But yet he is in heaven. Okay? All right? More on this. John 12. 23 under 33. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Yes, in order to be born again, you have to be broken. In order to be saved, there has to be a death. Okay? The necessity of death. Okay? Something that easy believism is totally against. Okay? All right? Writing this down for the description box. Okay? He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also my servant shall be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what, say, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this hour came I forth. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And glorify thy name. What's the name of God? Jesus Christ. Okay? Alright? Only one whose name? 
There's only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Whose name? Yahashahuahu or whatever. Give me a break. No. No, whose name? Before you enter the description box. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that a thunder. Others said, an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Ah. Now is the now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And that doesn't mean that all men will be saved. Okay? That means that he the way to salvation, the way to Christ, the way to God is the cross. That's what that means. This he said, signifying what death he should die. Okay? Okay, okay, the, the significance of the cross and who was on it, who was on the cross, okay? Will be for you in the description box. All right? But notice he said that for your sakes. Okay? And also I believe when the redemption of the purchase of possession happens, that we saints in a, a moment, are going to hear all of our names called at once, but the lost people are going to hear like a thunder. Okay? But he did that for the benefit of what? Those who were standing by. Luke 22. Go back to Luke 22. Verses 40 on to verse 46. Luke 22, 40 on to verse 46. And when he was at that place, and when he was at the place, meaning the uh, Garden of Gethsemane, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what, not my will be done. Excuse me. Saying, Father, if thou be willing. Remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus is the Father. Was he praying to himself? Yes. He was praying to himself and his Father who is in heaven. Jesus is the Father. Okay? Jesus called himself the Father. Yes, he did. Because he is the Father. He is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But yet the Father is in heaven. How does that work? You can say, well, great is the mystery of godliness, but see, God is bigger than you and I give him credit for. God is a spirit. God the Father dwells within every single saint, yet he's also in heaven. How does that work? How does that work? We are praying to the Father. We are praying to the Father who dwells within us, but he is also in heaven. Okay? God is a spirit. Does he not fill heaven and earth? Okay? All right, but now keep reading. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And he being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping with sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Hmm. And ultimately now, go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 2. We want verses 21 on to verse 25. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the capital S Spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fer fervently. Being born again, I read, I'm reading the wrong one, excuse me, excuse me. 
<laughs> First Peter 2, 21 unto 25. For, he, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps. Who did no sin. And contrary to what people want you to believe, we cannot stop sinning. We can't do that. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Unfortunately, us saints can have guile found in our mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. That example. Jesus Christ is the Father. But in prayer he was praying to himself and his Father who dwelleth in heaven. Okay? Jesus is the Father. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Not one God in three persons. How can the Father be in heaven, yet be in you? We see this example in Christ. He is the Father. He called himself the Father. Okay? But the example that he gave of how to serve as a servant. Servant. Okay? You see this example. But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And how did he do that? In prayer and in the Garden of Gethsemane? Not my will, but thine be done. That example of servant. Okay? That example of servant. Servant. Who, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Okay? All right? And now go back to Luke 22. Luke 22, verses 24 on to 30. Luke 22, verses 24 on to 30. Actually, while we're here, Mark 10. Mark 10, 42 on to 45. Okay? But Jesus called them to him, and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever, you, uh, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all the mind of Christ. For even the Son of Man, God manifest in the flesh, or Son of Man, excuse me, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, Son of God, God manifest in the flesh. Okay? For even the Son of Man came not to, minister, to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, Luke 22, verses 24 on to 33. Luke 22, verses 24 on to 30. Excuse me. 24 on to 30. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he said unto them, Kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that, that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, 
but I am among you as he that serveth. The mind of Christ doesn't mean that we have God's actual mind. No. It means the mind of Christ, he was, he gave us that example of a servant. A servant who submitted himself to God. The example that he gave by making, praying publicly, visibly for people to see that thing of a servant. Okay? Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. But God can't be tempted with evil. You're right. But the flesh could. Okay? And remember, flesh did not become God. God became flesh. Okay? And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay? Now go back to Philippians, picking up at verse 6 again. Let's read that again. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Because he is God. He is God the Father. Okay? But made himself of no reputation. Verse 7. And took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Romans 8. Verses 1 on to verse 4. And, and devils don't get this, because they're all about flesh. Okay, <laughs> but <clears throat> Romans 8, verses 1 on to verse 4. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S spirit. And the Lord is that spirit. For the law of the capital S spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Galatians 4. Galatians 4, okay? Galatians 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Okay? Galatians 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors, and under governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son. God sent forth his son, the Son of God. God manifest in the flesh, Son of Man. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, son of David, king of the Jews. Made of a woman. Made under the law. There are those out there who say that one of the dispensations was the three-year ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. I disagree with that. No, the law was still binding. Okay? The law was still binding. Anyway... <clears throat> Uh, says that a made of a woman, made under the law, made of a woman. The flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. We just looked at it, devil. But see, Jesus Christ was circumcised the eighth day. And see, Jesus kept the law perfectly. Hence, he never sinned, never even had a sinful thought thought foolishness of sin and because 
He kept the law perfectly, Jake, you jerk. That sanctified that sinful flesh being a perfect sacrifice for sin because God was manifest in the flesh and God in flesh never sinned and kept the law perfectly. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified. That's how that works. Okay? Okay, genius? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. See, God cannot be tempted with evil. God cannot, be, cannot sin. But yet, Jesus was tempted. What was tempted? The flesh. Okay? A couple of years ago, a lot of people jumped on that, and, and even, you know, Jake the Jerk, that lost devil that he is. Hey, so he called me a moron. It's like, oh, no, you're the moron, you're the stupid little idiot, and you're lost. Okay? That is what that means. Okay? See, Jesus kept the law perfectly. Hence, the likeness of sinful flesh made under a woman. We just read it! Okay? We just looked at it. All right? God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, kept the law perfectly. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. God became flesh. Flesh does not, did not become God. Unless you're a devil. And Satan savoreth, savoreth the things that be of man, not of God. Okay? And if any of you want to try to dredge that up, I'll just link in the description box. I will do that anyway, but in the comment uh, community section that has already been long uh, debunked by you, you know, the things that you bring up. It's like, oh, Brad taught that uh, Jesus said, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. You guys don't understand that because you're all about the flesh anyway. Okay? Now, let's continue in Philippians Let's read now verses 9. Uh, let's continue on to verse 18. As what is the mind of Christ? Let's read verse 7 again. But made, of him, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. There is one name given among men under heaven, whereby we must be saved. That at the name of Yahasha Washa Hishahushi, or whatever these idiots say, no, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in mine absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Lord has put himself within you. You are sealed until the day of redemption. Uh, he must increase. I must decrease. Work out what he has put in himself. The Lord Jesus Christ is our salvation. Okay? For it, for it is God which worketh in you. <laughs> To, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Hold, hold your place here. Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, 9, um, uh, 8 on to verse 10. For by grace 
are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's our faith, not the faith of Jesus Christ. It's by His grace, through our faith, not by faith through grace. Okay? Free gracers, twist, twist that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You, you don't say that openly, but in everything you preach, because your faith is in what? Your faith. Okay? Not of works, lest any man should boast. What works are those? The works of the law. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them, being a new creature, being ambassadors for Christ. Okay? Go back to Philippians 2. <clears throat> Verse 14. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, because God loveth the cheerful giver. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I be offered upon the, uh, the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice in you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. See, the mind of Christ, dear friend, doesn't mean that we actually have the literal mind of Christ. Or else we would know everything and we wouldn't have even a sinful thought. I mean, you've already figured it out that you can't get away from that, can you? Having the mind of Christ means that we have the mind of a servant as the Lord himself, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ had. Okay? That's what that means. Now let's look in uh, ver uh, Philippians 3, <clears throat> 17 on to 21. Brethren! Be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as ye have us for an ensample. Paul wasn't trying to, to create his own denomination like King James Bible, even Christianity. Okay, no. He was the example to the saint, of the saint, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. Okay, Paul was the apostle unto the Gentile. But after Acts 15, they all came out preaching with Paul, which was revealed unto Paul. Okay? And you read the book of Acts, Paul himself went to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We already read it about going to the Jew first. Okay? All right? But his example of how to follow Christ in this dispensation. Okay? That's what that means. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, carnal things, fleshly things, like the antinomianists, who are all about giving you a license to sin. Okay? For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior with seven letters, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Colossians 3, 1 unto 4. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Again, Jesus Christ is the Father. But yet Christ is in heaven and yet dwells in you. We've already answered that. Okay? If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, 
where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. <laughs> you see this? Okay? For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. We're coming back with him at his second coming. <coughs> First Timothy 6. That will be done. First Timothy 6, 12, on to verse 16. <clears throat> Brethren, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession among many witnesses. Kind of similar to what the Lord Jesus Christ did that we already looked at. For our benefit. All things that were written for time were written for our learning. Okay? <clears throat> fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth, make alive all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall shew, who is the blessed and only potentate, King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. For uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, then we'll be done. 2 Corinthians 5. <laughs> verse 11 on to verse 21 that will be done knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men but we are made manifest unto God and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences for we commend not ourselves again unto you give you occasion to glory on our behalf that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. Like the Christians, like the Catholics, like the Antinomianists, like the Baptists, like the Pentecostals. Not all Baptists, by the way. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are, we're all dead. Dead in trespasses and sins. And he that died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Again, the example of Jesus. Okay? The mind of Christ. To be servant. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. How do we know him after the flesh when he isn't walking around today? The scriptures. Okay. Therefore, if... Take your pen. Circle if... If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What brings about your changed life? What you do? Or that you are made a new creature? Okay? And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us, the body of Christ, saved people, to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, 
reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That does not mean that everyone's going to be saved. Okay? Not everyone is going to be saved. Okay? All right? Videos on that will be in the description box. All right? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. See, the mind of Christ means that you have the mind of a servant. doesn't mean that you have Christ's literal, actual mind. And, you know, though, and somewhere, someone out there, I'm sure, preaches that. And like I said earlier in the beginning of this video, I would not be surprised to find out that that wicked idiot Scott would come out with something like that as a follow-up. Well, you don't have your own faith. It's Jesus' faith. And, hey, you don't, have the mind, you don't have your own mind. It's the mind of Christ. I wouldn't be surprised if that devil would come out with something like that himself. So that is going to be it for this video. This video, specifically, we touched on the mind of Christ. So if anyone has a question about it, send them to this video, okay? So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you and thank you for your prayers. And thank you all you saints for all your prayers and everything that you do, your help, and praise the Lord for you. We have this horrendous black mold issue going on. Um, which I think is affecting both of us. Um, so, and hopefully, Lord willing, because today is Labor Day, um, hopefully, Lord willing, tomorrow, um, the company here will send someone over to rectify that, because that, it's pretty bad. So please keep that in your prayers for us. Anyway, thank you. We love you. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Amen.